chapter 31. Um, Laban tries to cheat Jacob, but he can't. But Jacob gets tired of it. He just gets tired of it. Laban and his children also get tired of Jacob always having richer flocks than they do. So they begin to be jealous of Jacob. They begin to hate Jacob a little bit. And at that moment in Genesis 31, verse 3, God speaks to Jacob. And God says, it's time to go home. It's time to go back. He's been gone 20 years. He runs away from Esau in chapter 28. And between chapter 28 and chapter 31, 20 years have passed. And God says, it's time to go home. Now here's what you have to understand. Remember when Jacob exploited his brother's weakness? His brother Esau came in from the field and thought he was starving to death and Jacob's eating a bowl of soup and Esau says, you got to give me some of that soup and Jacob says, I'll only give you the soup if you give me the inheritance and Esau says, well, what good is the inheritance if I die? So, okay, I'll give you the inheritance. Give me the soup. Now, Esau was very, very foolish to do that. But Jacob was also very, very sinful to take advantage of his brother's foolishness. And then Jacob does a worse thing. He lies to his father about his true identity. And he receives the blessing of inheritance through the hands of Isaac by pretending to be Esau. Now, today in a court of law, that contract would be nullified. We'd say, you got it under false pretenses. That's fraud. That's lying. That's illegal. It doesn't count. But in those days, once you said it, it was done. It could never be taken back. It was official. Once you say something, you can't unsay it. That's what was going on. But here's the thing we have to remember. God was going to give Jacob the blessing anyway. God made that clear before Jacob and Esau were born that Jacob was going to be the heir, not Esau. Isaac was trying to overrule God and give the blessing to Jacob. The problem is that Jacob did not wait on God's way to get the blessing. He chose his own way to do it. In his own way, made an enemy of his brother, a fool of his father, and it meant he had to leave home for 20 years. That's what came of doing it Jacob's way instead of doing it God's way. There was a man who lived in the 19th century. He died in 1905. His name was Hudson Taylor. I personally believe he was the greatest man of the 19th century. Hudson Taylor was the founder of the China Inland Mission. He was the man whom God used to open China up to the gospel. Hudson Taylor said this, God's will done in God's way will never lack for God's support, God's supply, God's power. It was God's will that Jacob, not Esau, have the blessing. That was God's will, but it wasn't done in God's way. Now, Jacob is told by God, it's time to leave your father-in-law. It's time to go back home. That is God's will. But Jacob doesn't do it in God's way. He does it in his own way. And it leads to trouble. And we'll see what trouble that is. So we come to this great point in the life of Jacob where he's ready to go back home. You'll notice in the Old Testament that there's this cycle which is repeated over and over and over. They're in the land. They're forced to leave the land. They are coming back to the land. They're forced to leave the land. Abram is sent to the land, Genesis 12. Almost immediately he leaves because of famine. 
The children of Israel are in the land late in Genesis. Well, Jacob is, is in the land. He leaves because he's afraid of his brother in chapter 28. The children of Israel are in the land, but they're starving to death. There's no food. There's another famine, so they go down to Egypt to be with Joseph. The children of Israel are in the land, but they're taken out of the land in 722 B.C. by the Assyrians and then 586 B.C. by the Babylonians. They come back into the land in 516 B.C. In 70 A.D., they're thrown out of the land again by the Romans who destroy their nation. They don't begin to come back into the land in significant numbers until the 20th century. Many of those Jews who've gone back into the land in the 20th and the 21st century have been Russian Jews. So this was a pattern which started a long time ago. You also notice in Genesis 28 that Jacob is spoken to by the Lord as he leaves the land of Canaan. God tells him, I will be with you. I will keep you. I will give your descendants this land. And then for 20 years, he really doesn't hear anything from the Lord. God is working out His promise providentially, supernaturally, in the land of Haran, in the family of his uncle Laban. But he's not hearing from God. Let me tell you something, or let me ask you something. How many times does God have to speak until it's true? Only once. And because God is not repeating His promise, that doesn't mean that God is not keeping His promise. And He is keeping His promise. All through the 20 years of Jacob's exile and sojourn in the land of his uncle and his father-in-law. But now God speaks again and He says it's time to go back. But as we mentioned a moment ago, the way that Jacob tries to do it is wrong because he, he decides to leave quickly, to leave secretly, and to leave without his uncle's knowledge. Now, Laban, I don't want to say he's a bad guy, but he's certainly not a good guy. But even though he's not a good guy, he is a father. And he does deserve certain rights as a father. And it's a big, big deal to take a man's children and grandchildren away from him forever. It's a big deal to take a man's children and grandchildren away from him without giving him the opportunity to say goodbye. That's a big deal. Today, my daughter goes to Brazil for three months. I can't be with her to say goodbye. She's leaving from America. That hurts me very much. I hope to see her again. I believe I will see her again. But to say goodbye to your children and to your grandchildren forever, or not to be able to say goodbye to your children and grandchildren, which was the experience of Laban, is a big, big deal. And what J Jacob's plan was to hurt Laban very much because he didn't trust him. Jacob believed that if he told Laban what he was going to do, that Laban may not let him go. Laban might keep one of his children hostage. Laban might kill him. Laban had not proven himself to be trustworthy, but Jacob had God's promise. Jacob should have done the right thing based on the character of God instead of doing the wrong thing based on the character of Laban. Jacob is still trying to do it his way. It will take him a long time to, um, it'll take him a long time to learn. He says in verse 7 to his wives that God did not allow your father to hurt me. God did not allow Laban to really cheat me in a way that would cost me that much. God, God has preserved our estate. So um, Laban get, uh, Jacob gets ready 
to move them out while Laban is off shearing his sheep. That was a big deal that happened once or twice a year and all the men went far away to the place of the sheep shearing and Jacob chose that as a good time to leave. Now in verse 19 we see the worst case of superstition. There's a difference between superstition and false worship. Superstition is the first step. False worship or idolatry is the final step. In America, there are certain things that we think are bad luck. There's a day which we believe to be bad luck, Friday the 13th. People get nervous about Friday the 13th. Some people think it's bad luck for a black cat to walk in front of you. I've known certain people to turn around and go the other way if a black cat walks in front of them. In America, people believe that a broken mirror is bad luck. And in America, most people will not walk under a ladder. You know what a ladder is, it's something you, you climb on top of. People won't walk under a ladder. They not only think it's dangerous, they think it's bad luck. These are superstitions. Now, it's silly for Christians to give in to those things. It's silly for Christians to believe those things. We know the truth. We don't have to believe in fairy tales. But those superstitions are not, not as bad as false worship. In chapter 30, we have superstition. The mandrakes, the plants in the field, will help Rachel have a baby. That's superstition. The wood placed in front of the mating animals will cause Jacob's sheep to have more sheep than the sheep of Laban. That's superstition. But later in chapter 31, we get to something much worse. Laban has idols in his home, images which evidently he worships as gods. And when Jacob runs away, Rachel carries those idols with her. She carries them secretly. I want to go back to God's sovereignty. And I want to talk about how bad it makes us feel that Rachel is beautiful and Jacob is in love with Rachel, but he has to be married to Leah too. There are two other things we have to remember. Even though Joseph shows more moral greatness than the other brothers, the fact is the Lord Jesus Christ came through the tribe of Judah, not Joseph. Here's what that means. The true blessing of the marriage came through Leah, not through Rachel. There are two other things we have to remember. Even though he didn't want to, even though he didn't mean to, even though he didn't know he was doing it, Jacob married Leah first. And the next thing we need to remember is that Jacob was not buried with Rachel. Jacob was buried with Leah. Even a small contribution can make a big difference. Jesus fed 5,000 people because of a little boy's five loaves. Regardless of the amount, your contribution is very important and greatly appreciated. Visit us at tvsseminary.com. Now, do we need a reason? Do we need to know why even though Jacob was in love, the plan of God seemed to include Leah in a greater way than Rachel. We really don't need a reason. We can just say it was God's sovereignty. We can just say it was God's plan. God's not going to rearrange His plan because Rachel is pretty. God is not going to rearrange his plan because Jacob likes Rachel more than Leah. 
That's not a good reason for God to change His plan. So we don't need to find any reason except that God is sovereign, which means God is in control. The plan is going to be according to what God, uh, according to how wise God is, not according to how beautiful Rachel is. The plan is going to go according to what God wants, not according to what Jacob wants. Understand? But, but, there is a reason. There is a reason. We don't need a reason, but there is a reason. Rachel is an idolater. Rachel worships idols secretly. And Rachel took those idols with her when her family left her father's house. She stole the idols from her father. It's, it's bad, it's stupid to think that those mandrakes have anything to do with Rachel getting pregnant. That's stupid. It's stupid for Jacob to think that those, those pieces of wood had anything to do with his sheep having other sheep. That's stupid. Stupid, but not wicked. The idols were wicked. The idols weren't just stupid. The idols were wicked. The most important thing to leave behind was the idols. Those are the things that Rachel brought with her.